Welcome again everyone. We think you will find today's video to be so fascinating. It is a walk through the scriptures we will read them to help reveal the spiritual meanings of the horses and chariots within the Lord's Holy Word, which has now been revealed and this channel continues to make videos about. And we want you to know that this video is going to get very deep, so you may want to stay until the end. Before we begin, we want you to consider yourself sitting in a chariot. Next, attach a horse to pull your chariot as you watch this video. Are you now sitting in your chariot with your horse ready to pull you? Okay, let's go. Chariots and horses together symbolize an unparalleled duo of strength and speed, reflective of divine might in action. This combination in biblical texts showcases God's ability to swiftly come to the aid of his people, reinforcing the notion of omnipotence and divine intervention. However, chariots and horses also possess a negative connotation in scripture, representing doctrinal errors, false beliefs, and the reliance on human strength and intellect over divine guidance. The spiritual meanings of these biblical symbols of horses and chariots represent the Lord's divine intervention when necessary. It seems to be a profound time that we live in today that the Lord needs to make this divine intervention as Christianity continues to die as polls show. Atheism is on the rise. There are millions who call themselves knowns, having no religious connotations with any religious institution. So many people are saying that we have so many false prophets abounding. So many man-made teachings coming from pulpits, especially in America. In this narrative, we delve into the profound spiritual implications, both good and bad, that these symbols of horses and chariots hold for the meaning of divine intervention. Now let's dive in. Consider your horse, symbolizing your understanding of the word. This is what is carrying you through your life. While your chariot denotes your doctrine, what you believe to be true by your understanding, which is your horse of the word, that reflect the structured principles of your spiritual path. And this can also be true about other things in our lives, but in this video it is about our spiritual lives. Now we will get into the unveiling the symbolism of horses and chariots in biblical texts. In apocalyptic literature, chariots emerge as formidable symbols of divine wrath and redemption. Their presence in end-time prophecies underscores the inevitable clash between good and evil, serving as a reminder of divine sovereignty over human history and the ultimate victory of righteousness. Chariots and horses as presented in the Bible. Chariots in biblical times were not just vehicles of war. They bore profound spiritual significance. These ancient constructs symbolized might and divine intervention, illustrating how God's power could swiftly alter the course of human events, much like the rapid deployment of a chariot in battle. In the visions of prophets, chariots are depicted as vehicles of divine messages, embodying the swift delivery of God's will and judgment. These visions highlight the profound connection between the divine and humanity, with chariots acting as conduits for sacred revelations. These ancient constructs symbolized might and divine intervention, illustrating how God's power could swiftly alter the course of human events, much like the rapid deployment of a chariot in battle. The reason is that when a chariot is mentioned in the Bible, nothing spiritual enters a person's idea, but only the natural historical, and it is the same with the horses in front of the chariot. And yet by horses in the word are signified things of the understanding, and therefore by a chariot are signified doctrinal things. So therefore a rider is the person riding their understanding of the word and pulling or using the doctrines whether they be true or false. However, as mentioned earlier, chariots and horses also possess a negative connotation in scripture, representing doctrinal errors, false beliefs, and the reliance on human strength and intellect over divine guidance. Chariots, often mentioned in sacred writings, symbolize the Lord's doctrinal teachings of good and truth. This symbolism arises because horses, which pull the chariots, represent elements of understanding and living by those understandings. So we will now begin getting into many scriptures. Behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire came between them, and Elijah went up in a whirlwind into heaven. And regarding Elisha in the same book, when Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died, and Joash the king of Israel came down unto him, and wept before his faces, and said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, 2 Kings 13:14, and in 3 Kings 11. And it came to pass, 
as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And twelve, and Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, their doctrines and the horsemen thereof, their understanding. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. The reason why they were so called is that by both Elijah and Elisha was represented the Lord as to the word. The word itself is chiefly the doctrine of good and truth, for from it is everything of doctrine. It was for the same reason that to the boy whose eyes Jehovah opened, the mountain appeared full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha, 2 Kings 6.17. That a chariot signifies what is doctrinal, the doctrines, our belief systems, and a horse what is intellectual, our understanding of the word, is evident also from other passages in the word. As in Ezekiel, ye shall be sated upon my table with a horse and chariot, with mighty man and every man of war. So will I set my glory among the nations, Ezekiel 3.20, and that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Revelation 19.18 As in Ezekiel, ye shall be sated upon my table with a horse and chariot, with mighty man and every man of war. So will I set my glory among the nations, Ezekiel 39.20, and that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Revelation 19.18 Where the coming of the Lord is treated of, that by horse and chariot here are not signified an earthly horse and chariot, is plain to everyone. For they were not to be sated upon the Lord's table with these, but with such things as are signified by horse and chariot, which are the things of the understanding and of the doctrine of good and truth. Similar things are signified by horses and chariots in the following passages. In David, the chariots of God are two myriads, thousands of peaceful ones. The Lord is in them. Sinai is in the sanctuary. Psalm 68, 17. Again, Jehovah covereth himself with light as with a garment. He stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. He layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. He maketh the clouds his chariots. He walketh upon the wings of the wind. Psalm 104, 2 and 3. In Isaiah 21, 1, 6, 9. The prophecy of the wilderness of the sea. Thus hath the Lord said unto me, Set a watchman to watch, he will declare. So he saw a chariot, a pair of horsemen, a chariot of an ass, a chariot of a camel. And he hearkened a hearkening, a great hearkening. For a lion cried upon the watchtower, Lord, I stand continually in the daytime, and upon my ward I am set all the nights. Then in very deed lo a chariots, again their false doctrine of a man, a pair of horsemen, again their false understanding of the word, and he said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. In the same, then will they bring all your brethren in all nations, an offering to Jehovah upon horses, again their understanding, and upon chariot, their doctrines, and upon litters, and upon mules, and upon couriers, to the mountain of my holiness, Jerusalem, Isaiah 66, 20. Again, behold, Jehovah will come in fire, and his chariots, his doctrine, shall be like the whirlwind, Isaiah 66, 15. In Habakkuk, was Jehovah enraged with the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thy horses? Again, their understanding. Thy chariots, doctrines are salvation, Habakkuk 3, 8. In Zechariah 6, 1, 3, I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four chariots, doctrines, coming out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, in the second chariot, black horses, in the third chariot, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, grizzled horses. Also in Jeremiah, there shall enter in by the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in the chariot and on horses, they and their princes, the man of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And this city shall be inhabited forever, Jeremiah 17.25 and 22.4. The city that shall be inhabited forever is not the literal city Jerusalem on the earth today, but the Lord's spiritual church signified by Jerusalem, the heavenly new Jerusalem at the end of Revelation, getting rid of all evil to produce a more heavenly mindset for everyone to live a more blessed life.
The kings who shall enter in by the gates of that city are not kings, but the truths of the church. Thus princes are not princes, but the primary things of truth. They who sit upon the throne of David are divine truths that proceed from the Lord. They who ride in chariot, the Lord's true doctrine of love to him and follow his commandments, and on horses, their true spiritual understanding, are the derivative things of understanding and of doctrine. Chariots are frequently mentioned also in the histories of the word, and the expressions signify things such as are in the Lord's kingdom and in the church. But back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 4. For if ye do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house kings sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. And Jeremiah 5 through 10. But if ye will not hear these words, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. 6. For thus saith the Lord unto the king's house of Judah, the consummated church, Thou art Gilead unto me, and the head of Lebanon, yet surely I will make thee a wilderness in cities which are not inhabited. 7. And I will prepare destroyers against thee, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down thy choice cedars and cast them into the fire. 8. And many nations shall pass by this city, and they shall say every man to his neighbor, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this great city? 9. Then they shall answer, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God, and worshipped other gods, and served them, all of those in profane and false doctrines. 10. Weep ye not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. Now more on the opposite spiritual meaning. As most of the expressions in the word have also an opposite sense, so have chariots, and in this sense they signify doctrinal things of evil and falsity, and also the memory knowledges that confirm them or trust in them, as in these passages. In Isaiah 31, Woe unto them that go down into Egypt for help, and depend upon horse, and trust upon chariot, because they are many, and upon horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. But note, most of you probably realize that by Israel, is not the physical state on planet Earth, as they took the name from the Bible in May 1948 from Jacob wrestling with God, we will be making a video on that also. With that said, back to the scriptures, in Isaiah 37, 24, By the hand of thy servants hast thou blasphemed the Lord, and hast said, By the multitude of my chariot am I come to the height of the mountains, the sides of Lebanon, where I will cut off the loftiness of its cedars, the choice of its fir trees. A prophetic reply to the haughty words of Rabshakeh, the king of Assyria's general. In Jeremiah, Behold waters coming up from the north that shall become an overflowing stream, and shall overflow the land and the fullness thereof, the city and them that dwell therein, and all the inhabitant of the land shall howl at the voice of the stamping of the hooves of his strong horses, at the tumult of his chariot, at the rumbling of his wheels. Jeremiah 47, 2, 3. In Ezekiel, by reason of the abundance of his horses, their dust shall cover thee. Thy walls shall shake by reason of the voice of the horseman, and of the wheel, and of the chariot, when he shall come into thy gates, beside the entrances of a city wherein is made a breach. By the hoofs of his horses shall he tread down all thy streets. Ezekiel 26, 10, 11. By the horses and chariots with which the Egyptians pursued the sons of Israel, and with which Pharaoh entered the sea Suf, were the wheels of the chariots, again their belief systems were taken off, and by other things said of the horses, their understandings, and chariots, which make the larger part of that description. In Exodus 14, 6, And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him. And 15, 7, And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him. 9, But the Egyptians pursued after them, all of the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea, beside Piahiroth, before Balzephon. 17. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his Pharaoh's chariots, again his false doctrines, and upon his horsemen, again their false understandings. 18. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. 23. And the Egyptians pursued, and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. 
25 and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord for them against the Egyptians. 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Exodus 15, 4. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea, his chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. And 19. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Yet, but the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea, which too are signified the things of understanding of doctrine and of knowledge, together with the reasonings founded on them, that pervert and extinguish the truths of the church. The destruction and death of such things is there described. The significance of chariots and horses extends to other scriptural passages where they spiritually represent the intellectual and doctrinal aspects of faith rather than literal chariots and horses. The chariot of fire that swept Elijah into heaven is a powerful image of divine intervention and ascension. This event marks a significant moment of transition, emphasizing that true power and elevation come from God. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. When we realize that Elijah represented the Lord as the Word, and that chariot means teaching from the Word, and horseman means the understanding of the Word, then we can clearly see why he was called the chariot of Israel and the horseman thereof. For the Lord teaches us by his Word, and thus enables us to understand all things relating to himself and the Word. In Haggai 2.22, I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations. I will also overthrow the chariot and those that ride in it, and the horses and their riders shall come down. And again, in Zechariah 9.10, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem. I will cut off the battle bow, and he shall speak peace unto the nations. Jeremiah's description of a city eternally inhabited aligns with a spiritual Jerusalem, where truths and doctrines, symbolized by kings, princes, chariots and horses, reign supreme. Warnings against seeking help from Egypt, symbolized by trust in horses and chariots, exemplify the folly of depending on material power instead of spiritual strength. Prophetic denunciations of arrogance and reliance on military might, as in the case of the Assyrian general's boasts, further illustrate the misuse of the chariot and horse imagery. Chariots held a prestigious place in ancient civilizations, often associated with the elite and the divine. Their biblical portrayal extends this reverence, symbolizing not just earthly power, but a conduit for divine intervention, illustrating the omnipresence of God in historical narratives. Lastly, the destruction of Pharaoh's chariots in the sea as described in Exodus, symbolizes the defeat of false doctrines and the triumph of divine truth. And in Revelation 9, 9, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. As stated in our previous videos thus far, we will be even delving deeper into the Lord's divine truth He has revealed, that He said in John 16, 12, 13, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And as we stated in the beginning, the spiritual meanings of these biblical symbols of horses and chariots represent the Lord's divine intervention when necessary. By the horses and chariots with which the Egyptians pursued the sons of Israel, and with which Pharaoh entered the sea Suf, where the wheels of the chariots were taken off, and by other things said of the horses and chariots, which make the larger part of that description in Exodus 14 and 15, are signified the things of understanding, of doctrine, and of false knowledge, together with the reasonings founded on them, that pervert and extinguish the truths of the church. The destruction and death of such things is there described. We still have so many videos yet to make, if you want to be notified, just hit the subscribe button and you won't miss out on any. In the meanwhile, feel free to watch our many other videos which help explain other spiritual meanings in the Lord's Word that truly make it divine. Thanks for watching. Until next time.